Well, get out of there, folks. It's Laban Ditchburn here, a.k.a. the world's best courage coach, streaming live across Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. If you haven't ever come across me before, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. But if you have, thanks for showing up. And uh, if you haven't, there's a whole resource of uh, amazing interviews with some of the brightest fascinating polarizing people on planet earth available on the podcast series that i created called become your own superhero and we we have those listed across youtube and video form but across all the other podcasting uh platform uh that that suits your style of listening i don't even know how many there is now there's a lot there's a lot i think most most of the popular ones are spotify and apple through uh, amazon as well but uh, you can find us under the Become Your Own Superhero podcast. And it's really for anyone that wants to learn from people that are taking bold, massive, and courageous action in their own lives and inspiring others to do great things. And that's really part of the topic of today. And these lives I've committed to doing Monday through Friday for the next 30 days. And I think I'd like to continue further from that, but I want to get into a uh, a good habit. And for those that are on Instagram, uh, I'm sort of balancing between my phone streaming and and, uh, and the computer, so uh, you, I have your attention, you have my attention, but uh, I just know that I'm not looking at you uh, in the eye when I, when I can. So today, today was around some words of inspiration, and I really wanted to draw upon some experiences that I've had in my own life, particularly over the last couple of years, and the last two years has really been a reset for all of us, and the conversations that I'm having with people out there are that the that you know March 2020 forced people into redundancy, forced them into doing something that they had maybe wanted to do or maybe they didn't want to do. But there's been a huge evolution of change, and and what I would say in my own experience is without the help, without the help of a lot of people in my life, I don't know where I would have ended up. And, and you might have heard me say this if you've heard me speak before, and, and Les Brown says, ask for help, not so that you appear weak, but so that you can remain strong and keep asking for help until you get it. And it reminds me of a, a, a situation that happened at the beginning of 2020. Uh, for context, my, my career before I got into speaking, coaching and writing was in IT recruitment. And I was an IT recruitment consultant. I did it for 13 years. At the end of the 13th year of working for someone, I decided to go out on my own and started up my own recruitment business in Australia called Become, no, called uh, Carnival Consulting, rather, Recruitment with Byte, B-Y-T-E, which I thought was hilarious. And it ended up being a total unmitigated financial disaster because <laughs> I wasn't interested in recruitment at all, as it turns out. I was sort of interested in learning about leveling up and health and well-being and and you know, personal and professional development and spend all my time doing that. And instead of having client meetings, I'd end up doing unofficial coaching sessions. And of which I'm very grateful for that whole experience because it was it was part of the whole journey. But during that that 2009 period, I had times in my life where I was like, I, I there was no money coming in and I needed to generate business quick. And I thought, what's the fastest way to do it? So I started reaching out to the CEOs of, of the organizations. You go to the CEO, you can affect decisions very quickly. And not many people have the, the gumption to reach out directly to a CEO in, in that environment. And so that was, that was part of uh, what I was doing in 2019. So I developed this really amazing skill set for overcoming rejection because you do get rejected a lot when you are cold calling CEOs on the cell phone, right? But surprisingly, surprisingly, a number of them picked up the phone. And there was enough of them, there was enough of them, I'm just going to post these. Thank you for all your wonderful comments as well. A number of them picked up the phone, right? And and entertained conversations. And it was enough to give me a sniff into, well, maybe there's something in this. And when I finally gave recruitment the flick uh, at the end of 2019, almost permanently, I, I reached out to a lady by the name of Brene Brown. And uh, for those who haven't heard of Brene Brown, you've been living under a rock. But she, she's uh, big on the shame 
side of things. She, she made it big with a, a TED talk that, that went viral a few years ago. And she shared on that TED talk about her alcoholism. And after she fin- finished recording this, this TED talk, she had a, a, uh, a vulnerability hangover, she calls it. And she wanted to get the video shut down. She didn't want it to go out into the world. So, but it didn't happen. It was already out. It was already out into the world. And uh, thank you. Thank you, LinkedIn user. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, someone's just said, uh, killing it with the red suit. This is the jacket I got married in. And I was like, why would I just wear it once when I can wear it another time, you know? But Brene had, has had this meteoric rise. And whether, you, whether you're a fan of her or not, she was someone at the time that I thought, you know, I needed to, to, to be inspired by. And so I got hold of her phone number and I called Brene Brown. And to my surprise, she picked up the phone. And bear in mind, this was January 1st, 2020, in Texas where she was. It was January 2nd in Australia where I was at the time. And she picked up the phone and she said, uh, hi, this is Brene speaking. And so I knew it was her. I said, Brene Brown? She said, yes, it is. I said, Brene Brown, it's uh, Laban Ditchburn from Melbourne, Australia here. She said, oh, she was very taken aback. Like, firstly, how did this person get my phone number? And uh, (laughs) I said, Brene, I'm a huge fan of you and your work. And all of my mentors have said to me that I need to be around people that are much further along than, than I. And I was reaching out to see if you'd be interested in uh, sharing some ideas. It was the only thing. I didn't have a book. I didn't have a podcast. I didn't have uh, really any coaching practice. I didn't have really anything of any significance at that point. Um, and uh, <laughs> she was very polite. She said, well, Laban, I appreciate your call. I'm about to sit down and have New Year's Day dinner with my family. But if you'd send me an email with what you had in mind, I'll come back to you. And so I did. I did. I did that. I wrote this bio of who I was and, and created like a little one-minute video that she could watch as well. And I sent it to her. And a couple of days later, I got a response. And she said, Laban, you know, and, and to give you some context, this is probably easily one of the most in-demand speakers, thought, thought uh, piece leaders, like influential people in that space on planet Earth. And I got FaceTime with her, really. She replied back in the most beautiful way. She said, Laban, uh, with what I have going on with family and, and school right now, university, I, I don't have the bandwidth to give this the, the uh, commitment that it, that it deserves. But you will do fantastic. Thank you, Brene. And I was like, it was a pivotal moment in my life because if she had responded in, in a way that was the opposite of that, in a negative way, maybe that would have scared me away from what happened following that, right? And this is the significance of how we respond in our own lives, particularly for people that are in this coaching and speaking and writing space, as your profile continues to grow, as your influence begins begins to grow, there's still going to be people that will come into your life that are at the beginning of their journey, like I was. And how we how we communicate to those people can have a, a long lasting effect. Well, because because of the way that Brene responded to me, it gave me this amazing surge of courage, and I started cold calling everyone. And when I had the podcast, I was able to reach out to some of the most extraordinary people on the planet. I've spoken to members of royalty, not for very long, mind you, some of the most influential political figures on the planet, uh, amazing artists, uh, sports stars, and a number of them have come on the podcast. And as a result, a number of them have been become lifelong friends. I've stayed in the homes of some of these people, all because I had... The, the gumption to get on the phone and, and ask for help. And so the, the, the lesson and the reason I wanted to share this is sort of two or threefold, really. It's like, the, allow the universe to give you the, the encouragement that you need. You know, I got a lot of rejection. I haven't had too many people tear into me or verbally berate me. There's been a couple, but that's their journey and that's, they're not people that I'm supposed to have in my life. But 
if Brene, you get a chance to, to hear this, and I, I did send her a letter uh, many months later just thanking her for her um, interaction. Didn't get her on the podcast, but that's okay. And uh, I've been able to pay it forward now. I've been able to respond, and I'm very conscious of the way that I, that I respond to people that are reaching out that is at the beginning of their journey. So I hope that helps today, folks. It's, I'm going to keep it, uh, keep it nice and short. I want to take advantage of these every day and um, share, share little anecdotes of my life that may be of value to you and your journey. And uh, for those that are interested in learning more, if you are looking for one-on-one coaching or, or uh, one-to-many group coaching, there's uh, some spots that have opened up in my calendar um, that I've got some availability. We need to work out whether we're a good fit for each other first, which is very, very important. My coaching is not for the faint-hearted at all. And it's uh, not that I'm trying to be a hard ass. It's just life's too short, right? We only get one crack in this carnation of life, incarnation of life. And, uh, you know, if you're ready, if you're ready to work with the world's best courage coach, then uh, we can talk about what that might look like. Uh, in the meantime, there's loads of free resources through labandditchburn.com, all of the podcasts. You know, we've had Nobel Prize winners. Many of the Hall of Fame speakers that exist of, out of the 250 on planet Earth, I think we've had about maybe 20 of them. Uh, doctors and scientists and pro athletes, and there's a few celebrities on there as well, if you like that kind of thing. And uh, But for the, for the rest of you, thank you for tuning in today. If you're not having a great day, I would encourage you to do so. And if you are, we'll keep up the good work, would you? <laughs>